Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 26 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Uh, today, taking a look at what we've got in this chest over here. Oh, and it's raining. Hello, rain. Hello. Hello, nice to see you. That's cool that you're raining and everything. Uh, I think we need a few more Ender Pearls than we currently have. So I might want to kick the tires and light the fires, if you know what I mean, on making Ender Pearls a thing that we can't do. Did I ever figure out why you guys like to teleport out of this room? I don't think I did. I don't think I ever fixed that little issue. Yeah, no, see, they're definitely out of the room. I think it's the height of the room, if I'm being totally honest. Uh, I never did get around to figuring that out. Uh, I guess I could take a look real quick. Uh, now that it's a little bit easier for me to get in and out of there, hopefully I'm correct. Let's, uh, I kind of like the whole dirt ceiling thing. So I think I'll stick with it. Uh, the question thereby becomes, does this become a bright enough situation such that when you're on, am I out of dirt in here? No way. Okay, I didn't think so. I find that every now and then, like, it, it doesn't want to right-click the dirt, and I don't know why. Hello. What is this? Am I missing something here? <laughs> what is going on with this spot? I'm going to relock. Okay, closing and reopening the game totally kind of fixed it, so that's neat. Uh, so let's see if this... The problem with this drill is that it's really good. Uh, this should now, hopefully, if my theory is correct, which like I theorized like a million years ago and never actually tested, but if my theory is correct, uh, which I hope it is. And now let's just, you know, yeah, okay, cool. Well, it's technically dark in this corner. So why aren't mobs spawning there? I don't know, but I'll take it. Um, so if I were to turn off the light switch. Which at some point I'll set up to, like, be wireless. <laughs> Cool. So mobs spawn in there, and then they die, and then we get their loots and all that good stuff happening. Cool. Uh, then we turn this on. There should be no more mobs. And if we turn this on, will Enderman teleport out of the room? Hopefully not. Cool. Uh, and then we should be getting... Ender pearls. Oh, sounds like we did get out. How did that happen? Not the height thing? Interesting. Very interesting. Still not sure why that's happening. We're gonna have to resolve that, possibly at our new base. It only happens with Endermen though. Like it wasn't happening with lasers, right? Oh well there's another thing. There's a there's a hole in the wall, so that doesn't help anybody. Oh, I think those are Endermen creating those holes in the wall. My bad. Uh, Alright, so we'll, 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 we'll play with that idea a little bit. Figure out why that's happening. I mean, technically I could make this room larger. That would be one approach. There's a couple things we could do here. But for now, I just want to get more Ender Pearls. The other thing I want to work towards... Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to make it bigger. I'm going to want some other stuff going. I want some, some mob spawning and getting some more essence if I'm going to be spawning Enderman. Uh, what I want to work on now is is sorting out those items, and then I want to get into um, making something cool. But first I want to get an Ender Chest um, so that I can actually collect the loots that we've got going on there. So let's get one of these dudes, and let's get one of these. Do, do, do. Uh, and we've got item ducks, and we've got servos... Uh, yeah, let me make another servo. I'm gonna need that later. But for now, this will be sufficient. Just love teleporting all around, don't they? 
And they like stealing my, my dirt. I should probably turn this into like a cobblestone building instead of a dirt building. And that would probably go a long way towards making this less of a less of an Enderman spawning issue. I like how they're just like, hey, I'm gonna steal your dirt from your walls. See ya. Wow, look at them really built grouping up over here. Because of the because of the rain. Really gotta figure out how they're getting out. Uh, so what I want to do real fast um, is set up a sorting system, basically, for the items that are in here uh, to be filtered into here. So we're going to want a whitelist filter. Uh, and these are the items that we're going to want to allow to come out of here. So let's sort this real fast. So, um, so ender pearls and gunpowder are definitely going to be on the list of things to come out of here. Solidified experience can come out. Um, spider eyes, for example. Uh, snowballs? Sure, why not? Uh, sticks? Yeah, why not? We can make sticks. And we'll take cobwebs. Uh, and we'll definitely want string. And you guys. And sulfur. And bone meal. And probably rotten flesh. And that's like a good. Oh, and definitely blaze rod. That's a good starting point. Wow, I have a lot more items than I thought I might. I might want to take you out of there and put those in. So if I then put all this away and we throw this circle on, go ahead and start extracting like crazy. I want to see what's left in this chest. Because uh, I might need to get a better servo, or, or a better filter. So you can hold... Filter. It doesn't tell me on the toolkit how many items it allows me to filter. Hopefully, resonance more. Because basically, I want to have another filter for things like bows and and leather and all that stuff that gets into a trash can. So that should all be sorting into our base now, which is cool. And wow. They're just literally going crazy with the whole steal your, steal your stuff thing. Probably should not make this out of there. Completely aware of that fact. Wow, you guys are really serious about this whole I'm gonna steal all your stuff thing. Look at it. They've literally like decimated my base. Right, maybe not decimated, but you know, pretty close. I guess it's a good thing it's raining. Whew. All right, so uh, I'll leave this off for now so that, like, mobs will spawn in there. But, yeah, we're going to totally have to do something about the Enderman situation in that building. Probably replace it with some kind of stone or something and maybe even make it look nice. So that's what we've got organized there. So the reason I wanted to move all that and start, you know, collecting those mob drops, uh, they should all wind up... Oh, hello. You're chilling in my base now, Mr. Enderman? No, that's not, that's not going to stand. Look, I've got an Enderman Morph now. You're in trouble. Ah, uh, cool. I should be able to sleep through the night at this point. Monsters are by. They in my basement? They might be in my basement. Yep. Still? Hello. Hello, Enderman. Gotcha. Wow, look at them all down here. Yeah, that Enderman spawner is not a joke. There we go. Sleep of the night. Cool. Um, so that's just part one of what I want to do. The next thing I want to work on uh, is automating two metals that we're going to need for the next stage of our build, and probably hardened glass as well. Uh, I want to automate signalum production and resonant filter uh, and derium production. And I would also probably like to automate um, speeding up uh, item conduits, and that's what we're gonna focus on right now. So in order for all that to work, we're going to need uh, another servo, cool, and another filter, and we need to automate 
these two machines, the magma crucible and the fluid transposer, which are going to be automated differently from the induction smelter and the pulverizer, because it's not put one item into one machine and get one out. It's put a couple different items into a couple different machines and wind up getting something out. Um, so it's pretty straightforward to do. I just wanted to make sure that we do it. So uh, with that said, uh, what I'm going to do is probably stick that there. How, can, how cool does that look, huh? All kinds of fanciness. And uh, that's cool, that's cool. So that'll go into there. So any recipes that we put in here will go into this chest, and then this chest can route things down. And we're going to want this, this, and this all on here. Cool. And you're going to be set to whitelist specific items. Uh, so for example, um, we need some ender pearls, boom, and we're going to need some glowstone, boom. And basically what we're gonna say is uh, glowstone, redstone, and ender pearls are allowed to go into here to be melted. And then into here, uh, we're going to wanna filter things like buckets. And item ducts, right? So uh, item ducts, for example, we can infuse item ducts with two millibuckets or 200 millibuckets of energized glowstone to get impulse item ducts. Now, you get uh, from one glowstone 250 millibuckets. So it comes out to be four glowstone plus five item ducts equals five energized glowstone, right? Or, or, or energized item ducts, right? So can I do that recipe right here in a smart? So five item ducts with four glowstone, if we write this pattern and put it in here and then put all this away, if I wanna get five impulse item ducts, it's gonna use four glowstone and five item ducts to do that. Um, and then they will go into here with this guy set to the appropriate thing, it's gonna route things appropriately, right? So the these guys go into here, this stuff goes into here, the magma crucible starts cooking down the glowstone, the fluid transposer is waiting for the item ducts to get infused, uh, the magma crucible should probably be sped up, I should probably look at doing that, but once I've, once I've automated all the recipes that I want to automate, then we will be able to do better things, trust me. So that should be cool, so then you get that, and then you get that, and then you got routed out. Perfect, that's what I wanted to see. Okay, so with that in place, uh, now we can also do uh, Signalum. So Signalum uh, is made an induction smelter with this. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is say to get Signalum, we wanna put this recipe in, right? And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna ignore the slag part, right? So it's two Signalum blend plus sand equals two Signalum, right? And I should be able to get more patterns now, no problem. Beautiful. Uh, and then to get signal and blend, we need basically this. Uh, and it doesn't matter which dusts we use. Um, I guess just for the sake of making it look nice, but it really doesn't matter because we're ore dictionary, right? Uh, and then a bucket of redstone uh, is going to be this recipe. Uh, and this one should have been item, like a vanilla crafting table recipe. So let me fix that in a minute. Um, so this is going to be... 10 redstone plus a bucket equals a bucket of destabilized redstone. Right? Uh, and then that is used in this recipe, but like. Erg. This, this, that, that. Cool. Okay, so that's regular crafting, that's induction smelter that and then we also have to know for processing um how to make uh pulverized copper and that will go into the basically the pulverizer and you're also going to need to know how to make pulverized silver which will also be the pulverizer and i'm going to remove the lead one here that actually should be Middle click, cool. Okay, so all these things should come together to basically allow me to make 
Signal them on demand. So this is our pulverizer. So the recipes that go in here are silver ingot becomes pulverized silver and copper ingot becomes pulverized copper. Okay. Um, this gets put in here because it's a vanilla crafting table recipe, right? It's just, you know, into a crafting table. <coughs> uh, this guy, one bucket plus 10 redstone equals a destabilized redstone bucket. And then finally into the induction smelter is the two signalum blend plus one sand equals signalum ingot. Cool. So now if we said that we want a signalum ingot and hit start, uh, it needs a bucket, which I can just put in there. But eventually I might teach it how to make buckets and hit start. And what we should see happening is you're pulverizing your copper. Uh, you've got your 10 redstone and nice, nice, nice. Cool. And your bucket's sitting there waiting to go. Good deal. So now's probably as good a time as any to work on upgrade kits. Uh, so you should know how to make... I constantly forget that. Because it's a new mechanic. I just have to get used to it. Um, I need to teach you how to make hardened glass, by the way. I haven't done that yet. And Signalum upgrade kits. And then... Uh, did I not hit the button for you? So those upgrade kits are now known. Signalum needs cryothium dust which is that, and then you, we're gonna teach to the pulverizer uh, processing mode, right? So you, 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 pulverizer, that, we're gonna remove the snowball, and that should be cool. So pulverizer knows how to make that. You are one of these, as are the rest of these. Cool. So in theory, we should be good uh, to make everything we need now. And you're done, and you're done, and you should maybe be making my induction smelter run, or you already finished your signalum crafting. Uh, so we've got our signalum blend. This should be, did it run already? Is it finished? Sweet, it did do signalum ingots. That's cool. Okay. Nice, so we're pretty much good. All right, all right, so Signalum worked. So what I'm gonna do now is say, hey, can you get me um, the appropriate upgrade kits? Uh, and if I want to, I could just say how to jump directly to Signalum. So the Signalum conversion kit, all I have to do is say, um, so for the conversion kit, if I wanna get one that I can just immediately click on there, it's not a big deal. Um, to add this to the crafting recipe. Signalum conversion kit. So that needs to make all the prerequisites, right? Uh, the only thing we might not be having right now is the hardened one. All right, so what I'll do is pulverized lead. Uh, we'll say that pulverized lead makes hardened glass. Um, pulverized lead is made from this guy. And then pulverized obsidian, which is the induction smelter recipe, is obsidian in a pulverizer. Cool. So there's your pulverizer. So these two go in here, and then this is the induction pattern. And that should be cool to make my conversion kit. Thinking about it. Every now and then this happens, and I don't know why this happens, where it gets stuck there on start, so I have to figure out why that is. So you're cool. You don't know why that is. Well, I think I figured it out. We were missing a couple of the gear prerequisites, but it should have told me I don't have gears instead of just getting stuck on the start screen. But let's see if I'm correct about this. See, now we're ready to craft. I had to teach it how to make electrum and silver gears. But in theory, it should craft everything it needs for this, and now's the time to find out if things are gonna get stuck. They shouldn't. But we'll find out. So everything seems to be working pretty well, which I'm uh, a bit excited about. So you're processing all your stuff. Hardened glass is being processed. Um, nice. Hardened glass is being processed. That's correct. That is being processed. 
Nice, and we have a Signalum upgrade kit, which we can throw right onto the Magna Crucible. Wait, what? Didn't I make... No, we made an upgrade kit? Oh yeah, I want a conversion kit. Oh, oh, oh. I did ask for a conversion kit, it just hadn't crafted it yet, so I was being a little bit uh, impromptu with it. We'll just cancel that for now. So I should be able to craft that, yes. I crafted the right thing, I just stole the upgrade kit before it was actually ready to go. Hmm, no machine found? Oh, did I put the wrong recipe type in there? Probably did, knowing me. I probably had this thing in the wrong mode. All the dire derps. So now you're cool for a kit. Beautiful. And this can go on my Magma Crucible. All right, cool. So that's going to be um, a big part. The last part I want to get is Enderium, because Enderium is obviously used for a lot of things. Um, so Enderium Blend is lead and platinum, um, which we're gonna need to teach uh, in this mode. Yeah, so that's fine. So lead and platinum, and pulverized platinum coming from uh, the pulverizer. So if we have platinum ingots, which we don't have a lot of, we're gonna have to figure that out, uh, how to get more of that. And then uh, you are an induction smelter recipe. And then finally, the, the bucket of Enderium is going to be basically, it's four Ender Pearls. Cool. So that should be teaching it how to make Enderium. You go into the Induction Smelter and you guys go into the Pulverizer and we are good to go. Cool. So uh, with that said, I should be able to request Enderium missing Resident Ender Bucket. Didn't I just teach you how to make one of those? Molten Enderium Bucket. You know what it might be? Uh, let's do... You guys go in there. It might be a weird or dictionary thing. So by just making one bucket, we can more hard code it into the recipe. So the one that we probably have to fix. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, that's right. Uh, this one will be the one of these I have to fix. Did I teach it? What did I do? Did I derp up somewhere? Did I teach it in Darium Dust? Oh, that's why. Ha <laughs> Derp. Dire, please, with the derps. So just out of curiosity, we should be getting Molten Enderium Resonant Ender Bucket. Aha, okay. So if I said you, yeah, you don't recognize the Resonant Ender Bucket as the type that we need because we want it to be So I want to change this recipe instead of molten enderium, we want it to be resonant ender bucket. So now, if we requested enderium, cool. And just out of curiosity, where's a better place to get platinum? Uh, so platinum ore can be found from void miners. So that's a thing we might want to get into sooner than later. Uh, or um, pulverized platinum, which comes from bees or platinum ore, obviously. Um, or it comes as a 15% chance from nickel here. Uh, Crusher can make it, obviously, out of that stuff. I'm looking for the pulverizer recipe. So... You get it from Iridium Ore, which I don't think even spawns in this pack, or Nickel, at a 10% chance from Nickel Ore. It's not terrible. Can we get it a higher chance, maybe? Still 10% chance on Tectonic Initiator. 
which is an augment, by the way, which allows my ores to become tripled. It, I have to feed it something, though, so I haven't gotten into that yet. Okay, so nickel ore is basically where you get that from. All right, back in a minute. By the way, my enderium just finished crafting. That is cool. Okay, awesome. Uh, so the next thing I want to get into making is something cool from Funky Locomotion. I want to get into frames, hopefully. Um, so... To get into frames, we're gonna need a few things. Uh, the first thing we're gonna really need is a frame pusher, which requires Enderium nuggets. Hey, I wonder why Dial spent a lot of time building Enderium automation. Hint, 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 hint. Uh, there's also the frame pusher, the frame slider, which, hey, needs Signalum. Something I'm gonna be needing. Uh, frame teleporter, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, so with that said, uh, we are going to need a few of these blocks and items. There's also super frames, which I haven't played with yet, but they look cool. They look really cool. Um, and uh, that's what we're going to mess with today is frames. So with that said, let's think about how I want to do things. So we're probably going to want to teach you how to do a few recipes because I want to play with frames a lot this season if I can uh, because frames are just fun. Do you guys know what frames are? I have to imagine most of you know what frames are. Um, because they are just super cool. Uh, so the frame pusher is the basic item that we're going to want. You're going to need to know how to make enderium nuggets, by the way, because I'm not storing enderium in a compressed drawer. Um, frame puller, I could probably, I'm not going to waste my time teaching it that because I don't think I'm going to use it. Uh, but I do want you to know how to make signalum nuggets while you're here. Um, frame slider. Was that one? That's the one we just uh, got. And then frame blocks themselves. And you should probably also know how to make invar nuggets. Cool. And we probably might want a few more of these things. Uh, so that's cool from Funky Locomotion. The other thing we're probably going to want is a wrench from Funky Locomotion. I don't actually need the pattern though. I meant to actually just make a wrench. And we might look at getting an eye wrench but we'll see if we run into problems with frames at some point. <coughs> so with you all set up and running, nice. Um, I should be able to come over here. I'm gonna want basically probably two sliders. That sounds fair. Yeah, uh, is what I'm gonna want. So you can see all the prerequisites there. And then we're gonna want like 20 for now, maybe even 30 frame blocks. So we'll start that guy up. Um, and one other thing I might want is the frame projector, which is kind of cool. Um, the frame projector is new. Uh, I don't think we've ever seen it before in any of the series that I've done because it's a relatively new block. So I do want to check it out because it's cool. Uh, are my crafting guys done? Yes. Out of curiosity, passive RF 174 right now is what this thing's using. So just FYI, we're getting to the point where we're using more and more power. Uh, so that's all auto crafting, and I want that frame projector to be a thing. Missing a frame puller. Okay, so I do have to teach you how to make a frame puller. Um, and then frame projector. You should know how to make that already. Cool. And maybe what I should teach you how to make real quick, just to have, is the rice slime ball. Uh, I'll get to that when I get into liquids and all that kind of cool stuff. Cool, so lots of stuff being auto-crafted here. Back in a minute when this is all done. All right guys, so what's Funky Locomotion all about? Funky Locomotion is a really cool mod that does a whole bunch of cool stuff. Um, basically, uh, you're gonna wanna use this wrench for rotating the blocks, but Basically, the blue side of a slider, uh, or in the case of the pusher or puller, these do different things, can move frame blocks. And frame blocks can be connected to other frame blocks such that they all move at the same time. And frame blocks can also connect to any other blocks, including tile entities, like chests, to be able to move them. What does this mean? Uh, so it means something like this. If we rotate this guy, um, and we place a couple frame blocks up here, and we put a chest on the frame block, and we put things in the chest, we can move stuff. Uh, now, the arrow here indicates the direction that it's going to slide. 
If we shift right click, it'll change the direction of that arrow so that they slide in different directions. But in this case, we'll let it stick to that. These guys do need power. Boing. Uh, and they also need a redstone signal to run. Uh, so in this case, I will make it a button because that sounds like something I have the resources for at the moment. Boom. Uh, and basically what happens is, provided this thing has enough power, um, it, when it receives a redstone signal, boop, will move the blocks. Cool. Uh, and it'll move them again. And it'll move them again until it runs out of frames, in which case there's nothing to move, so then you're out of luck. Um, and of course, if you wanted to, we could do that. Now, the other cool thing you can do with frames is pretty much it'll move all sides of the block. So let's rotate this guy. Uh, I want to do... There we go, that guy. Uh, and then we will shift right click to make it go this way. Uh, we do that and it drags those blocks with us like we would expect. Now, if you right click a frame block with the wrench, it turns it into this like grade mode. Uh, and that means it won't drag the blocks that it's touching. Pretty cool, right? So even if it's touching blocks, it won't drag them. So one of the things that I wanted to do like 10 episodes ago, and I wanted to work on my technology to be able to get to the point where I can do frames uh, without much problem, is move that guy. Remember, we, we had him way up in the air and uh, or, or on the ground, and we didn't have enough power, and we wanted to put him up in the air, but we were like, man, that's going to be annoying to go all the way up there. Uh, so being able to frame move it up and down as needed would be kind of cool, right? Um, and totally standing on frame blocks, like they will... Um, move you along with them. How cool is that? So if I'm standing on that thing when it goes up, I'll go up with it. I think that might be a cool build. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we have time this episode to really get into that. So what I'm going to do is break all this stuff that I built. And next episode, we'll come back and ideally set up a cool kind of frame system that can move stuff. Now, every block that you want to move with frames needs to be attached to a frame block. Uh, which is going to be kind of ugly and annoying unless you use the new mechanic, which is the frame projector, which we're going to look at next episode. So for now, I'm going to wrap up. Next episode, we'll come back. We'll take a look at what the frame projector is and does, and we'll have fun playing with it. Cool? So for now, Dial20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Lots of good progress today. Uh, tons of automation uh, has been accomplished, and it's really going to, it's really getting to the point where I can easily auto craft all the things I need to auto craft. Um, at least for now. All right, guys, take it easy.